Hi, I'm Joachim Roning. I'm the director of Maleficent, Mistress of Evil. And today I'm here to do a one scene breakdown of the dinner scene. I remember the story of a baby. A baby cursed to sleep and never wake up. Really? Who would do such a terrible thing to an innocent child? Well, there are many who prey on the innocent. I'm sure your kind would agree. What do you mean, my kind? She means humans. There are fairies missing from the moors. What I'm missing is some wine. Stolen by human poachers. That's the first I've heard of it. Someone gave the order. So this is a seven character dialogue marathon with all of them sitting. These days were also some of my favorite days because not only do I have Michelle Pfeiffer, I have Angelina Jolie, I have Elle Fanning, I have, I have everybody there. And usually when you do dialogue scenes like this, you tend to try and get the characters and the actors to move a little bit around. And that's what makes a sit down scene a little bit trickier. Usually when you do, you know, any dialogue scene, you have the two characters here, and then you try and stay on one axis with the camera so that you get the feeling of them looking at each other. It's like shooting a, a football match, you know? You, want, you don't want them to score in the, all in the same goal, as they say. So when you add a third character, you start to suddenly be very free on where to put the camera, but at the same time, the audience needs to know what the character on camera is looking at. So then you can add another four <laughs> to this, and then you get our dinner scene. There are fairies missing from the moors. What I'm missing is some wine. Stolen by human poachers. That's the first I've heard of it. Someone gave the order. There's a very good scene, I feel, in the movie. Uh, called uh, Casino Royale, where uh, Daniel Craig and Mats Mikkelsen are playing poker, and they are also like seven, eight people. Raise 12 million. There's also other scenes from other movies that you know I sat down with and studied because they are very tricky and, and technical, even though they might not seem like that at all. Usually, we were sh I was shooting this scene with three cameras. Since the uh, the light source is in the middle of the, the table, it allowed the, the DP, Henry Bram, to actually shoot in several directions at the same time. So we were allowed to actually rig three or four cameras just in the middle of the table underneath their eye line. So they could be looking over the camera, talking to each other. I could shoot basically a 360, you know, the whole crew just hid outside of the, of the set. As a filmmaker, you, you will also visually try to make it interesting and you want to underline certain moments in the story. The scene is a very important scene in the film because it is the scene where we, for the first time, see that Queen Ingrid has a hidden agenda. You have done an admirable job going against your own nature to raise this child. But now she will finally get the love of a real mother. Everything that Queen Ingrid says is part of her plan. She's pretending to be a little bit naive in order to, to lure Maleficent out on thin ice. She wants her to show her evil side. At this moment in the scene, Maleficent realizes that this is not necessarily just a, a pleasant, you know, meet the parents dinner. Obviously, Michelle Pfeiffer was uh, at the very, very top of my list for playing Queen Ingrid. She's a, one of the very few that can go head to head with Maleficent. <laughs> If I didn't know better, I'd say you were making a threat. Well, do you? Do I what? I remember this was one of the first scenes that I ever shot with her. Of course, I've seen drawings of her costume and, the, you know, the jewelry and all of that. But there's something very, very special when she walks out on the set as Queen Ingrid in full costume and in character. Blocking-wise, framing-wise, I'm pushing in with the camera on each one, which is a very common technique in order to create the focus in the scene. You know, I'm fo focusing in on Queen Ingrid and putting her plan into life, but subtle. I want the audience to focus in on what she's saying, and I want the audience to focus in on Maleficent listening to Queen Ingrid. And I don't want anything else to really be of importance in this scene, so I put them in the middle of the shot. However, this character is a big part of Queen Ingrid's plan. 
for Jen Murray, who plays Gerda in the back there. We shot this scene over a week, <laughs> so, and she doesn't have any lines. <laughs> so for a week she was standing back there, <laughs> like that. But she's in the scene, and it's very important for me. So I liked having her out of focus, like just as a reminder, you know, that she's there. There's a lot of special effects in this movie, and Angelina's wings are probably the most important for her because it's part of her acting. It's part of Angelina's acting, and and it's, it's, it's important that it's subtle. We used the movement in her eyebrows, actually, when she was acting, to trigger the wings. So if there's a little bit of movement in an eyebrow, we would have like a wing going up, and that really worked. <laughs> so that was a good little template to have. You see the talons here, it's always like some of the most tricky things. So this is all CG, and you know, you, you work on getting as photorealistic as possible. So you see there's a shine in here, there's a shine in the little, you know, in the little feathers. And it needs to be the same black as her dress, and, but a little bit shinier. And then the focus of the wings needs to be a little bit off, you know, compared to her eyes. You know, so that needs to match. And the, each feather, you know, each feather is moving individually, actually. And, uh, you know, this takes a year to make. Uh, and these wings are just tremendous, I feel. Of course, when we're shooting this, there's no wings there. So you have all the servants in the scene, you know, trying to serve her food and, and drinks and stuff like that. So they also, you know, they can't be walking straight to the wings. So they have to pretend to go around the wings and do their thing. Also, what I do like with her wings is that they're kind of mirroring Queen Ingrid's throne. The talons here and then, so instead of, you know, instead of wings, <laughs> she has her wings as well, you know, so it becomes the two thrones that these queens are, are sitting on. Who would do such a terrible thing to an innocent child? Well, there are many who pray. Angie and I, we spent hours discussing the, the color of <laughs> her lips, you know, because I felt a little bit in the first film that they were too colorful. And uh, so we were going a little bit back and forth and I think we landed on a slightly cooler red. So those are the things that, you know, needs to be discussed. And it's very important, you know, because it's such a big and important feature for Maleficent. And then, of course, her eyes, she's using lenses. They're very, very hard to see through. You basically get a tunnel vision, I think. So you basically just see the middle of your sight. Her face is a mix between prosthetics and CG. So these are all in camera. So these are prosthetics. And then the kind of pale hue that Maleficent almost radiates that's applied in, in post-production to give her that otherworldly, you know, feel. There are many who prey on the innocent. I'm sure your kind would agree. What do you mean, my kind? So here you see we're shooting the other characters in this scene. This is uh, Prince Philip. This is the Queen Ingrid. You know, so we're kind of covering the, the king here. I put the characters that I really want the audience to focus on in the forefront of, of the shots, and then framing the king uh, slightly further back amongst them. We're a bit f we feel like we're further away from the king and we're closer to the main characters in the foreground. What do you mean, my kind? She means humans. Eye lines are interesting when you have seven characters sitting around the table talking like this because, you know, you have Prince Philip on that side, of the camera, you have the king on that side, you have Aurora on that side, and then you have Maleficent on that side. Two looking camera left and two looking camera right. And when you're shooting this, you know, she will always be looking at, you know, whoever speaks or whoever she speaks to. But then in editing, they try to, to, to create the geography in the room. So you have the king, looking at the queen, and then I will use that eye line to cut to the queen, looking at the king, and then looking from the king to, for instance, Maleficent. She means humans. This shot I love because it's a wide shot and you get to see some of the fantastic production design that Patrick did. It was a 360 set, huge dining hall. We built this on the soundstage at Pinewood Studios outside of London. You know, you see the pillars built and then the king and queen thrones in the back there. This guy, he's the etiquette expert, like a medieval, uh, you know, he knows how they ate and what they ate. And it was important for me to have like this overflow of food on the table, like colorful. And, and the, the only issue was medieval times that they didn't really have colorful food, you know, it was like 
potatoes or something like that. It's a fantasy fairy tale, so it doesn't need to be absolutely real, but it was good to have him. And also in etiquette when it comes to how they would sit, how they would, how the servants would behave, how, you know, how they would put food on it and all that. So he's in, he's in several scenes in the film. <laughs> this table is actually huge. It measured almost 70 feet long. And at one point, I came actually really, really close to putting the queen and the king on each side of the table, you know, so you had them like that, and then they would be like that. And then I put Maleficent in the middle next to Aurora, and then, you know, but it just turned out to be like a shouting match, basically, because they were so far away from each other. So I ended up putting them all at the end of the table, and then, of course, putting the queen next to the king, and then having her team, team uh, Alsted on this side, and then team Morse on that side. And then the king, he's kind of like the referee in the middle. We actually went back and forth a lot, actually, in regards to what was the Alsted color. And we ended up with it being red. So you see Percival, you know, the general here being uh, in red. You see the king being in red, the cloth being in red. And that's part of the castle colors. And this is the sky outside the windows here. Are, um, it's dusk. So that's why it has, still has a little bit of glow to it. And that's not blue screen, that is actually uh, a backdrop that we had painted. There are fairies missing from the moors. What I'm missing is some wine. Here you see Prince Philip trying to break the ice a little bit, because he's, you know, everybody's in the room kind of feeling that the, the conversation is going a little awkward. And I think it was important for the scene also for me to create a little bit of uh, lightness to it, you know, because it gets long and gets a little dark. What I'm missing is some wine. Stolen by human poachers. This is, oh, this is kind of funny. You see these guys? <laughs> They're playing instruments. It's kind of the band in the scene, but they can't be playing for real, you know, because you need the sound from the dialogue. So they're just miming. They're just pretending to be playing. So that's what they did all week. This the magic here, that's also like hours and hours of meetings with visual effects supervisor Gary Rosenich deciding the color of this green, the amount of it, the density, the movement. It always baffles me how much actually goes into, you know, creating these effects because this is not in camera. So we have to design it from the, from the bottom and at the same time also honoring the first film and, you know, the color of the magic in the first film. Maleficent here is starting to put things together and her instinct is to go full evil. <laughs> and the only one that can calm her down is Aurora. So that's why I went you know, as close as possible. I didn't want any of the other characters to really notice her fingers having a little bit of, of green magic to them. Only Aurora is reading her godmother and trying to calm her down, you know. She's seeing where this is going. Elle Fanning, so amazing to work with and uh, every day impressing me how she really held her own with Angelina Jolie and Michelle Pfeiffer in the room. She's the only one that can handle Maleficent. So in a way, she's a very powerful character, despite her innocence and sweetness. As a director, you sit behind the monitor and you're listening in and you're watching what's being filmed, especially also since we're shooting three, four cameras, it actually feels almost live, you know, that we're making a live movie. So uh, these were very, very special days. That was Notes on the Scene for Maleficent, Mistress of Evil. Thanks for watching.